for staying with us and still watching Independence Day special on Plus TV Africa. Now still on the issue of the economy. On this segment, we'll be speaking on Nigeria's power sector. Nigeria has an abysmal power situation yet to be tackled. It's a study conducted by the French Agency for Development revealed that the financial losses in Nigeria's power sector is growing by at least 474 billion naira annually. Nigeria is the largest economy in the sub-Saharan African region. However, limitations in the power sector constrain growth in the country. We are endowed with oil, gas, hydro and solar resources and have the potential to generate 12,522 megawatts of electric power supply, according to USAID, from the existing plants. But most days we are able to generate around 4,000 megawatts, which is really insufficient. Now this again brings us back to the case where Nigeria is still saddled with insufficient power generation to meet up with the needs of our over 190 million population. Now let's understand the gravity of this issue better. I have in the studio with me Chuks Umezo Laura. He's a co-founder and chief operations officer at Oxogno Solar Nigeria Limited, as well as Femi Adeyemo, who is the founder and CEO at Energy. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you, Irene. Happy Independence Day. To Happy you. Independence Day to you. Happy first Independence Day, Nigeria. First, when you were growing, did you ever scream up Nepal? Absolutely. That's, that's about four <laughs> decades ago. So, I mean, 40 years ago, we know what the electricity situation used to be in Nigeria. So, absolutely. And Chooks, did you ever scream up Nepal? You were a very tush kid. Oh, yes, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was very exciting. Anytime you come home and you meet power, you always ask them, please, is there light at home? I mean, mm. you know, so if there is light, it, it was luxury. Yes, yes, it was. There was a luxurious was. effect it had. Apart from that, it also determines what your program for the evening will be like. Mm. You know, so you um, adjust your programs depending on the availability of the light. Okay, so let's get, let's, let's get to business right now. Do you think we're at a dead end? We are over 200 million in population in the country, yet we have to depend on what? 5,000 megawatts of electric power supply. Mm. Are we at a dead end? Femi, we could start with you. Um, so, I mean, the statistics you mentioned is right. 200 million people we are struggling with 5,000 megawatts. We need to be at 200,000 megawatts, which is 200 gigawatts. Uh, but will I say we are the dead end? Um, not exactly, right? Because there are, there are ways to do this. And I mean, we have seen countries, uh, even neighboring countries that have proven that if we do the right thing, we can get there, right? So I think it's about the will. Do we have the will as a nation to resolve the electricity crisis? that we have in the country. So I won't say we are the dead end because there are even renewable solutions that are coming up instead of us probably doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a, a different, different result. result. We need to do it a different way. Chooks, let's get your point of view. OK, all right. Thank you so much. You know, um, being at the dead end, no. You know, part of the things that keep exciting about this nation, Nigeria, in spite of our challenges, is that you know, this nation is blessed with enormous human resources. You know, the but, I mean, Nigerians are one of the most brilliant minds you will get anywhere in the world. We have proof. Yes. You know, now, you know, so just like, you know, uh, Femi said, once there is a will, because unlike the natural resources that we have before, unlike the national distinct grid that we have before, deploying renewable energy resources, especially solar, it doesn't take so much time. And then the technologies are well advanced. I mean, it's not rocket science anymore. So in other words, you know, in one year, if you want to, I mean, use solar, you can do so much in 12 months. Once there is, you know, the right will, the right policies, and the right infrastructures are in place. So yeah, we're not a dead end, and we can do so much more. Yeah. Now let's move a bit to the president's speech earlier today, being Independence Day. He said in August um, this year, we launched the Presidential Power Initiative to modernize the national grid in three phases, starting from the 5 megawatts to 7 megawatts, then to 11 megawatts by 2023, uh, and finally... Gigawatts. 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 gigawatts, sorry, yes. And finally 25 gigawatts afterwards. Yeah. Is this a realistic plan, Femi? Again, um, I would say yes, it's realistic. Is it achievable? Do. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's a different question. And it's achievable, again, if we have the right will and approach it with the right mindset. Is it implementable? So like most things that we've had in the country, even policies, I think where we have uh, failed as a nation is in the implementation of policies or target that we set. 
So uh, is this achievable? Yes. Are we going to be able to implement it? That's a question that is, I mean, begging for answers. However, like Chooks mentioned, we have brilliant minds in the country, right? So, I mean, with this approach, and I mean, of course, we have policies that have been said before now, the vision 30, 30, 30, that to have 30 gigawatts uh, by year 2030 and 30% of that renewables, which means the remaining 70% will rely on natural gas and other sources. So, yes, it is achievable. And this partnership, I mean, that you mentioned that the government signed, which is with the German uh, government, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's again in line with the policies that have been set initially. So all what everyone should be looking forward to is, is in the implementation. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, that's what we want. Absolutely. The, all of those policies. And meanwhile, what, what does this portend for us as a nation? Again, so when I look at that critically, I, from where I see it, I'm saying that and it's, it's heavy on centralized power system, which historically has not worked for us. 10 years ago, we were at around 4,000 megawatts. So if we want to get to 15 gigawatts, are we doing it differently? So my, I'm an advocate of decentralized energy. I mean, I won't sit here and say we should focus solely on renewables. I mean, we have gas resources. It's about us focusing on what will give us that right mix. And because of our nation, Centralized is not going to give us all what we need. So we need to begin to look at decentralized. Even if we're installing more gas plants, can we have it distributed? There is no reason why we're generating in Igni and we're transmitting it to all Kaduna. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. And we need to begin to look at decentralized to be able to achieve a uh, 15 gigawatts or even the vision 3030. All right, Chooks, um, let's get to the issue of policies and then frameworks as well that need to be implemented. Do you think we have the right policies and frameworks that would make us get to the point where we are now in a more competitive electricity market? Being able to compete with the other nations here. You know, yeah, to be um, honest, like Femi also said, I don't think the issue is not policies. I mean, there are, we have so much policies that we've copied from other nations. The issue is, you know, does the people in charge actually understand what the policies are all about and how they can go about to implement them? Because we have these policies written. I mean, we've had vision, it was formerly like vision 2010, then 2020, now it's 2030. It's as though we keep pushing the date forward. As it mm. gets closer, we push it this way forward. Right. You know, now, but what we need to ask ourselves is, okay, how do we solve this quagmire? Like I said, decentralized is what a lot of us is beginning to preach about now. What we're saying is this, it may make more sense to use like renewable solar in the far north and generate you know, more for them, I mean, with a little mix from the gas than because they are very far from the supply of this in gas. So I also saying, okay, where you have, you know, where you have more of gas, you know, use more of gas there. Where you have more of wind, use more of wind there. Where you have more mm -hmm. of solar, use more of this than solar there. Because most countries in Europe, particularly this in Spain, I mentioned about, one of the things that made it successful is that a lot of them had you know, a good mix of renewable into their mix. I mean, you know, Spain, Germany, most of them are nearing like 50%. There was even a day Germany celebrated a 100% full day. You know, I mean, that the whole energy they used that day came from renewables. You know, mm -hmm. so, but those things we have been driven. It's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Absolutely. You know, because they had a target from the European Western Union and they are doing everything possible to meet those targets. Just like China. I mean, the same thing Nigeria signed at the palace, um, club, at, I mean in France, a few years ago, you, yeah. know, for, you know, but other countries seem to be taking a bit more serious than we are. I mean, you know, to us, most times it's as though we're used to, I mean, signing dotted papers. I mean, when we sign it, we and close then, it, mm -hmm. and then that is it. I, when it's one year, two years, we start writing, and we say, ah, no, no, we need we more time. Yeah, you know, so, but I think that with the right mindset and knowing that these things can be, they, they, I don't know question is this, the people in charge, do they actually believe that this is surmountable? Mm -hmm. Because 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 if you don't believe that this is surmountable, it won't work. It won't exist in the newspapers. Now let's talk about what happens on the field, Chooks. I know that you have a, a vast knowledge when it comes to solar, you know, generation and all of that. I need to know what exactly happens when you're out there on the field. What what are the challenges? How 
possible is it for virtually everyone or maybe half the population of Nigeria to adopt the solar energy you know, power generation platform? You know, um, in the last few years, you know, the um, solar sector has gained a lot of milestone. Traction, you know, yes. This attraction, you know. But though, like many of us have observed too, one, uh, one of the biggest um, setback too is um, the financing because of the huge capex involved at the upfront, you know. So, but even though now most of our um, financing institutions are beginning to, you know, look at the sector and see, okay, how they can come, you know, into the sector, you know, to finance the sector, you know. I believe that as we go on, you know, once we begin to do a bit more in the area of the financing, you know, people begin to adopt solar a bit more. Because one thing that has changed is this, unlike five years ago, 10 years ago, where people say that solar doesn't work, you know, I mean, a lot of people are not saying that anymore. So Can right tell now, us about yeah. the effectiveness? <laughs> yeah, so effectiveness, um, I mean, recently we, we closed our Series A round of $9 million. Four investors, I mean, European investors, I mean, all on, which is local, I mean, the Shell Fund was part of that. So because, uh, I mean, these are investors from different climes, they know that the technology works and it can work everywhere. So in Nigeria now, we're seeing pent up demands, like Chuk mentioned, I mean, a lot of people before things, solar is that thing that can just power lights, right? That has changed significantly. We have a whole hospitals that we're powering, with solar in Nigeria. So the adoption is, is getting very, very high. We're seeing traction. So effectiveness, solar can power the whole of Lagos. Mm. If we have enough land, comfortably. comfortably. I mean, we see cities in China, China from renewable in last year alone, they had about 20 gigawatts in the first six months. I mean, we are at four gigawatts as a country. But another country in six months installed 20 gigawatts of solar capacity. So effectiveness is not the problem. And I can tell you that investors are, are going to solar now because, I mean, it's good for the climate, greenhouse gases and all that. So effectiveness is not the problem. And the awareness is getting better as a nation. What has not happened before is on the financing. Because as I always said, if we are expecting people to buy, consumers to buy solar outrightly, then that might be a tough call. But we see organizations like ours now that are knocking on businesses and saying, OK, I can put the infrastructure on your facility and you pay me on a monthly basis. You're spending the money today anyway on a dirty source of fuel, which is diesel generator, right? Mm -hmm. So we see customers now switching to solar. They're paying by the month. They don't need to, I mean, to acquire the assets upfront. So with that, I mean, we see that there is hope. So on the policy, what I will expect that, I mean, as we're, as we're having policy around the, central, I mean, around the centralized grid, we should be focusing on the centralized grid. The current government is doing a bit on that, but I will expect more on the implementation side and to make it easier for consumers, for the citizens to acquire. I mean, in countries like US, Germany, when they started that, it's highly uh, rebated. I mean, you see 30% tax credits when you acquire solar, that is not happening here. We're not even asking for a rebate. Make the implementation of the policy that we already have to be as easy as possible to encourage citizens, both consumers and businesses, to be able to acquire. Now, we know that based on what you both have said, right. we, we've been able to establish the fact that, of course, solar is one very good option. Absolutely. Now, looking long term, if you need to compare the cost of revamping our existing, you know, our existing grids, right. yeah, and power generation platforms, mm. and going fully into solar and other renewable energy sources, which is more, which is better for us? You want to take that? <laughs> you know, um, I, mean, I mean, you both, you both are in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. You know what is happening. You, yeah. you, you've seen it firsthand. Okay, let, 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 let me go for that. So again, I will, I will take us back to year 2010, sorry, 2000, 2001, the telecom sector. So it's the same thing that we experienced. If we had waited to revamp the old, the legacy Nitel network, Nitel. we wouldn't be where we are today with 100 million subscribers. So that's what we're saying. As much as we might want to revamp our transmission network, which is likely the bottleneck, generation is not the problem. If you like generate 100 gigawatts tomorrow, centralized. If you can't transmit it, we will be it's at the same point, zero. right? 
So as we're doing that, we need to look decentralized. And I mean, it is that that is going to help us to be able to get to where we want to be. Chooks. Yeah. And also, you know, uh, the all other issue with transmission is also the huge cost. Mm. I mean, you know, um, transmitting the infrastructures costs a whole lot. It costs a whole lot. So what I was saying is this, instead of trying to take power, you know, to someone living in a very far village, I mean, I maybe it's going to cost $1 losses. million. Dollars. Mm. Mm. Why don't you use a fraction of that money, set up a solar mini grid for them in that village? The solar mini grid can come upstream in four weeks. I mean, you know, but the transmission, even when you have all the money, it takes a very long time to build. I mean, it takes a very long time, several months to build. You know, so that transmitting, you know, so that transmitting is one huge distinct challenge, you know, this and that we face as a people. So that's why, you know, we are calling for decentralized. I mean, look at these things, find out, okay, what mix works best for which area? Mm -hmm. Because to be honest, you know, I mean, the same thing is not going to work everywhere. I'll give you an example. Recently, I mean, you know, there was a state in the north where, you know, they built a very large, you know, wind farm and all that. But it didn't work. It didn't work. I mean, because, because you can't look at Germany and say they're doing, you know, they are doing so much from wind and also and copy everything and say, I want to do wind here. You need to also look, okay, what are the resources that you have in that locality? Do you have more of solar? If you have more of solar, use solar. If you have more wind, use wind, you know what I mean? But they just copy and paste, you know, wouldn't work because that's, that's a challenge that we see sometimes in our policies and the, mm. and the implementation. We seem to just, you know, copy what we see working somewhere else just... Without you know, a feasibility it, study to know if this would really, really work in the yeah. region for which you're trying to... Exactly. And just to add, I mean, we have the mini-grid policy, I mean, which, of course, is, is distributed. We have the World Bank, um, I mean, working with, uh, I mean, our Ministry of Power and the Electrification Agency is implementing a one a 300 million dollar debt to to be able to catalyze the adoption i mean of mini grid of solar home system but again implementation has it been set up to allow ease of adoption by the customers so those are things that we need to look at to ensure that we get to where we want to get to as a nation okay but we i know you both should be familiar with the proposed tariff hike mm. How do you think this would affect the sector and Nigerians? Okay, let me, let me go first. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you know, you know um, to be honest, I stand to be corrected, but you know, reviewing our um, energy tariff may be one of the single biggest decisions that can unlock the sector, to be honest. And of course, you know, you should expect that Nigerians are going to cry and complain about it. You know, but I mean, if you have two people, I mean, two bakery. And one is selling on credit, one is selling for cash. What will happen to the one selling on credit in a few years' time? They will close the shop. One of the reasons why you know, the sector is struggling to raise money is because no one wants to put fund in a venture that is losing money. You know, we must have a tariff that is cost-reflective. Our energy tariff is highly subsidized. I mean, if you look all around the world, I mean, even in the charts here, yeah, I mean, China and India, you know, have almost the lowest distant tariff, but ours is still far lower than what they're paying. So if you want the sector to come alive, just like we have in telecommunications, we must allow the market demand and supply to determine the tariff. All right, we're running out of time, but finally, finally, if for those that want to leverage on renewable energy you know, platforms, renewable energy entrepreneurs as well, how can they be a part of this entire process? Yeah, so I mean, there are uh, impact investors, I mean, like um, All Launch, USADF, I mean, that are looking at new entrepreneurs that are just coming up that they can, they can align to. And there are uh, competitions that, I mean, they normally set up. And for us as an organization, I mean, we, we partner with even upcoming organizations, I mean, for our installation network across the country. So those are different ways that upcoming entrepreneurs can, can, can get into the, into the sector. So you brought about, I mean, yeah, like the Oga when it comes to solar yeah, you know, you know, uh, just like Femi said, you know, organizations like us, Oxano Solar too, we've enjoyed a lot of goodwill, you know, a lot of support from all on, you know, USADF. You know, because you know the financing for them, also Bank of Industry has also been helpful. Right. You Correct. know, they also helped okay. us, you know, to expand our solar panel assembling, you know, okay. plant located here in this in this Lagos. So the market is growing, 
upcoming entrepreneurs can find a way. I mean, if you're very good in the technical, maybe you can look at the installation aspect of the business because somebody like me, I started out as a technician installing solar systems. So that is one area. Distribution is another area. Franchising is also one big area that is this coming up. For example, an upcoming uh, entrepreneur can walk up to energy and say, okay, can I be your franchise partner? Maybe in Kano State, in Kaduna. So there are many opportunities where people can come in. You know, so that is one. Even even revenue collection is also a big another big area for people playing the mini grid space. You know, you can go there and say, okay, I'm familiar with this terrain. I can help you collect the, the revenue. You know, so there are many options. You the know. hidden smile on your face tells me that there is also money in the sector. Ah, right? Absolutely, <laughs> it's my charity. All right, thank you so <laughs> much. It was amazing having you both in the studio. Thank All you so right. much. Thank happy independence. So happy independence. Thank you, Irene. All right, now this us. brings us to the end of the conversation. We still have a lot more for all our viewers. Once again, happy independence. <laughs>